So Israel is a very small piece of land. Um, Tel Aviv is its major city, Jerusalem its second city. I, um, sending Avi there, Avi's got his wits about him, he knows the language. He's a former Israel Defense Forces soldier himself, so he knows how to handle himself, he's a veteran. He has friends and family in the country, so he knows how to move around. Right now, we're working on getting him and his cameraman, Benji, a bulletproof vest and a helmet. I understand those bulletproof vests are actually illegal to buy in Canada without a permit. Uh, and of course, Avi's coming from Australia, but I, I understand it's the same there. So Avi is now on the ground in Israel. It's uh, after sunset there now. It's nighttime there now. And Avi will be starting his reporting in earnest tomorrow. Our mission for him is twofold. First of all, to tell the story. But second of all, to tell the story of others telling the story. What I mean by that is to cover the war, but also cover how others are covering the war. Cover how the media party is covering the war. Let me give you an example. Uh, Efron, do you have that tweet I did in response to the, that Guardian journalist? The Guardian is a left-wing newspaper. It was called the Manchester Guardian, um, but it's just generally called the Guardian now. And it's a very left-wing paper, extremely woke. Um, sometimes their headlines are indistinguishable from, uh, you know, the, the Babylon Bee. They're so ridiculous that you don't know if it's a parody or not. Here, let, I can find it. Just search. Oh, you got it there. So I want to show you. This is a real... T I didn't know it was real, but this is a real person. Bethan McKernan. Bethan says... Just looked at today's UK front pages, and I am horrified by the headlines. Okay, stop right there. So she's horrified, obviously, by what these butchers did, raping, torturing, murdering, hostage-taking, right? Is that what has horrified her? No, 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 no. Just looked at today's UK front pages, and I'm horrified by the headlines claiming 40 babies beheaded by Hamas in Kafar Aza. Yes, many children were murdered. Yes, there were several beheadings in the attack. This claim, however, is unverified and totally irresponsible. No, it's actually verified, sister. And uh, it's true, not all 40 of the babies were beheaded. Your point taken. Uh, most of them were just murdered the regular way. And I wrote, the Guardian newspaper wants you to know there's a right way and a wrong way to murder babies. And she's absolutely horrified, you should know, that newspapers would get it wrong. I mean, why are you defaming Hamas? Why? I mean, she should do a fact check. Fact check, false. No, 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 no. Only some of the babies were beheaded. The rest were just shot or had their throats slashed or whatever. This Guardian reporter wants you to know that the newspapers got it wrong. That, I swear that's real. That, I, did, I didn't believe it. That is a real reporter for the Guardian. But we saw the other day uh, a memo from the CBC leaked, but it didn't need to leak. It wasn't a secret memo to begin with. The CBC will tell you if you ask them. They refuse to use the word terrorist. They have a policy. The CBC, along with CTV, apparently, along with the Associated Press, along with Reuters, they all have the same policy. They do not use the word terrorist ever unless they are quoting someone else saying the word. So if someone else says the terrorist group Hamas and they're quoting that person, they won't edit the, the person's quote but they themselves will never say it. Because that would be to take sides, you see. <laughs> I mean, imagine applying that to other situations, an arsonist. No, 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 no. No, um, th that's being too blamish, too blamey. We'll let the prosecutors and the firemen call him an arsonist, but we'll just call him a fire uh, p positive person or something. Oh, the murderer. No, 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 no. 
I mean, he's confessed. We have him on videotape. He, no, no, no. He is a, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm just trying to think of any other situation where someone is something, but you don't say, and they say they're that. And by the way, I don't know if you know this. Can you Google this? Google Canada terrorist list. And it should pop up. Canada's Department of uh, Public Security, that's our version of the homeland. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, put that, if you Google, it's on Public Safety Canada, that's our version of the Homeland Security. This, as you can see, Government Canada website, currently listed entities. Pump it up a little bit for my old eyes. There you go. Uh, several listed entities, da, da, da. So these are currently listed entities. These are the banned terrorist groups in Canada. And um, there are some from certain places, but you can detect a bit of a theme here. A little bit of a theme. There's Hamas, uh, Harakat. Al there's, I mean, there's there's a lot of the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, Islamic State. There's a lot of different Islamic State terrorist groups. It's just <laughs> almost a whole page. Um, yeah, there's one or two, but um, there's the Tamil Tigers. There's the Pal there's the Palestinians. I, I chuckle. I shouldn't laugh, but they put the Proud Boys on there. Um, the Proud Boys have had one event in Canada about five years ago when several Canadian forces, Proud Boys, including a gay man and an indigenous man, went on Canada Day to stand up for the Canadian flag. That was the only time that Proud Boys did anything in Canada. And um, Trudeau put them on the list because he wanted to show it wasn't just left-wingers and it wasn't just Islamic extremists. But uh, there's the Taliban. Um, thanks very much. What I wanted to show you there I, I talked a lot about that page, but what, I, but what I wanted to show you, and I did show you, is that Hamas is on that list. So it's actually not a matter of opinion. It's not a matter of um, what he says and she says and split it down the middle. It is a matter of fact, and it is a matter of law, that Hamas is a terrorist group. It is, and I know that because it is on the official list. It is on the list not just of Canada, but of many other countries, including other countries in the Arab and Muslim world. And yet the CBC and CTV and Associated Press and Canadian Press will not call them terrorists unless they're forced to because someone else is saying that and they're quoting that someone else. I saw... A tweet, I don't know if you can find it, Efron, I'm making you find so many things on the go. But I saw a tweet from, uh, about the New York Times. The New York Times accidentally used the word terrorist. And they changed the story to remove it. I am not making that up. I don't know if you can find that, Efron. I, I, oh, yeah, you got it. I can't believe you found it so quickly. Take, take a look at this. So here is... Version one, Hamas leaves trail of terror in Israel, blah, 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 massacre of civilians by Hamas terrorists. So that was version one. You see it says Hamas terrorists? Ver <laughs> Hamas leaves trail of terror in Israel, the massacre of civilians by Hamas gunmen. You can't call them, and by the way, they weren't all gunmen. This is actually less accurate because some killed by beheading babies. Some killed by burning their victims. Um, some have, took hostages, and we will only find out what absolutely degraded barbarity uh, is yet to emerge. The New York Times literally made their story less accurate. But God forbid they should call Hamas terrorists. It would hurt their feelings, and that Guardian reporter would be horrified. Uh, I don't think she used the word horrified to describe the horrifying things that these terrorists did. She was horrified for them. And so one of the purposes of Avi's trip to Israel is not just to report on the war, but to report on the reporting of the war and to point out things like I just showed you. By the way, we're sending a reporter to Israel, Avi Yamini. In fact, as I speak, he's boarding the plane in Melbourne, Australia, to fly with our cameraman, Benji, to Tel Aviv. He's there to tell the truth about the war. If you want to help us crowdfund his economy class airfare from Australia to Israel for him and for Benji and for their hotel costs and other costs, we're trying to find him a bulletproof vest, for example. 
please go to the truth about the war.com that's the special website we've set up the truth about the war.com from downtown toronto well uptown toronto actually in front of a line of police this is ezra levant for rebel news